Good in walk in Bernation. How are we? Fabulous. Tremendous. The bestest. Believe it. I believe it. Too many oaks. You're the best. Shalom bear. Bevex. Good morning. Debra. The best. Debra. I saw Debra climb the wall one time. Tremendous. Believe it. Joe. Good morning. What do y'all think about this freaking debate coming up tonight? I think that there is the best prepared Biden body double ever fixing to take the stage. <laughs> There's no way otherwise. Bread and circuses. Good morning, Kenneth. Agreed. Debate. Yeah. By debate, I mean, what do you think about Donald Trump beating the ever-living snot out of Joe Biden verbally tonight? W.A. Prepper, good morning, brother. One of the ways that you can tell it's been busy around here is that I literally can't find the four quart size insulated cups like this that I have. <laughs> so I've had to move on to my son's coffee cup yeah Devin I agree with that haunted shalom country shalom max headroom Roger uh, I'm not cold I just look like I would be cold if I didn't have the gear on that I do I'm not cold it's very humid here right now I don't know if you can see my breath I don't think so Especially now that the sun's just starting to peak over the horizon. It's very humid here. And um, it's in the mid-40s. And so that doesn't necessarily... I mean, it's not cold, cold. It's not kill you cold. But hell, I mean, 36 to 38 degrees in wet is about the best weather for dying. <laughs> so it's just very difficult to stay alive um, <clears throat> in in situ embedded in the terrain when you're wet in 38 degrees without some real skills and good gear and i'm not i mean i'm sitting on my porch drinking coffee and it's mid 40s and humid but um it went from two weeks ago we were all like i mean not even two weeks 10 days ago it was like yeah we're all gonna die of heat stroke and now it's like where'd i put my toboggan cap so Organic, Roger. How do you like your coffee, brother? Um, you know, I had a guy that worked for me named Noah, actually one of my best friends. And we were in, uh, by God, West Virginia, in this little coal mine in town. And he's from New York, and I'm from New York. He's from downstate New York, and he talks like a New Yorker. <clears throat> and... The waitress comes over. She goes, hey, honey, how do you like your coffee? And he goes, how I like my women, hot and black. And every 350-pound bowling ball armed coal miner in that place turned and looked at us. And I was like, Noah, we need the GTFO before these people beat your brains out of your head. <laughs> yeah, there's some little hollers in West Virginia where... Yeah. Um, yeah. Anywho, I've I've drank enough bad coffee that I like good coffee. I like my coffee with heavy cream in it. That's how I like it. But I'll take it however I can get it. And I'm not terribly picky, but if I have a preference, I'll take some heavy cream in it. So. Morning, Wendy. My dad used to say that in five-star restaurants, <laughs> amen. Yep. Pinky's up, pinky's up. James, bless you. I'm black, amen. I see a lot of Black Rifle coffee shirts around. Is it any good? Georgia, they make good coffee. They certainly do make good coffee. Part of why I think people buy a lot of Black Rifle coffee is because their branding is awesome and their mission statement resonates with a lot of people, um, particularly servicemen, servicewomen, 
who are out there putting their nuts on the line every day. And so their branding is as good or better than their coffee is, in my opinion. Um, I think there's, there's just as good coffee can be had for a lower price, but when you buy Black Rifle coffee, you're supporting the people at Black Rifle Coffee, and the people at Black Rifle Coffee are good people. So that's my opinion of it. I mean, is it worth paying a couple bucks more bag to support good people? Yeah. So. <laughs> Shut up, Chris. <laughs> Oh, shut up, Chris. That's funny. Yeah, I like their espresso. Um, their AK blend. I don't remember. Yankee, good morning. Deb, shalom. Met the owners last year at an event. Great people. Exactly. I was in Rage of Battalion with Matt Best. Roger that, Philly Flash. So that's, that's what I'm saying, is you're supporting those guys, and those guys are ridiculous and funny and um, the right kind of broken, but dedicated to the right kinds of things. And it's worth spending another couple of bucks here and there or every day, whatever you prefer. So uh, to support people that you choose to support. I mean, that's that's what we're all about here, right? There's Logan Matthias. Good morning, brother. There's lots of places you can get stuff. You can get an iFact from anybody. I prefer that you get one from me, but I really prefer that you just have one, right? You can get armor from anybody. I prefer that you get it from uh, the NWA Prepper at AdventureFrontier.com. Good morning, Arthur. Shalom. Uh, but, um... I'd rather you just had it, but if you got to get it, I'd prefer that you get it from people that we love, people in the Bear Nation, right? Somebody said, what's the, the coffee jingle? Your life might be a disaster, but your coffee isn't. Disastercoffee.com. There we go. How's that? <clears throat> Chaga coffee is the only coffee you need. You're incorrect. Because I need this coffee, and it's not Chaga coffee. Good try, though. Mm, you're welcome, Brian. Bear, did you do garlic this year? Yes. Comma. It's somewhere in the rainforest that is my garden. <laughs> Good morning, CLC Farm. Um... The uh, garden got away from us this year because hashtag COVID, hashtag business, hashtag unprecedented rainfall. <laughs> That's a great idea, Chris. Or we could not buy all the IFACs from China. That way, if we go to war with them, our stuff will actually work if we get shot. So... Girl in a garden, you're welcome. <clears throat> yeah, the um, our garden did good. Grandma's garden did great. Uh, yeah, the garden had COVID, man. It was crazy. Uh, it was really bad. And so we had to social distance from the garden, and then uh, all the weeds came in. So it is not raining here. I don't know what the dew point is, but there's enough humidity in the air for sure that if it got a little bit cooler, we'd at least have, I mean, there is some dew, but you give a little cloud cover, it could rain here no problem if it wanted to, so. Can you share what you do during Sukkot? I literally live streamed that yesterday morning on Patreon for all the people who asked on Patreon yesterday before the uh, YouTube live stream. So I, I literally, 24 hours ago, went through that. Did you finish your outhouse? I'm in the process of finishing it. Um, I don't know if you all can see, but we added yesterday corner posts for the uh, roof line here and uh, added another board across the front with some more posts here. That's going to catch the porch. 
so that we have a way to get in and out here. So there'll be five quarter pressure treated deck board running this way with stairs over on the side. And then, uh, so today I'm gonna get that porch portion done. There's a pipe, a drain pipe in the ground that I've got to uh, fix over here. I've only found it three times with the track hoe. Bless you all, American wife. Thank you. Um, oh, the pergola looks freaking awesome. Um, you know what? We might just walk down there and see if the Wi-Fi will reach that far. But yeah, the rustic gazebo looks awesome. Only three times, Earl's daughter. And the reason the rustic gazebo looks so awesome is because of Earl's daughter's husband uh, for show. Um, he did... He finished that thing. I started it, he finished it. And when I say I started it, I mean, I did the uprights. He did everything else, um, but it looks phenomenal. Uh, but yeah, we found that drain pipe only three times. And so the good news is I shouldn't have to do any more digging over there. So, but I'm gonna buy twice as much uh, of the things that I need to repair it in case I find it a fourth time. And, um, then I gotta set one more post over there. I'm gonna do the front porch today as well as finish the sheathing. And then tomorrow we'll do the internal stuff like setting up the uh, dividers and making the benches for you to sit on while you do your business and all that. So Bama Buckeye, shaloha brother. Shut up Brewsters. Gosh, I was laying in bed this morning there's one in the front yard that needs to die. Just needs to die. Bless you, NWA Prepper, but I did look. Oh, I love you, brother. You're awesome. Let's go for a walk. Our director of agriculture is over here. Ma'am, you've got a squirter. That's not where the goat goes. That's... Wrong side of the fence. There you go. You can do it. Perfect. You're a pro. You're good at this. You're good at this. You can do it. Don't worry. There's only 709 people watching you chase a goat right now. Yeah. We believe in you, Miss Liz. We believe in you. Do you want the paintball gun? You want the gun gun? Yes! You got it! Good job! <laughs> and that's why Miss Liz is our director of agriculture. Alright. Really? Let's see. Y'all still got me? If I get under this tree limb, can y'all see the gazebo back there? How's that look? Check that out. You didn't hurt the goat. Try harder. I'm going to hurt the crap out of that goat. You like that? That's an awesome gazebo. I'd show you. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'll start walking that way. If you start losing me, tell me. Because, like, it's hard to get some scale from where we're standing. But it's awesome. And they got, I don't know if you all can see it, but the young men stacked uh, stones in there for the fire pit yesterday. <clears throat> um, which is awesome. And uh, poor goats, so misunderstood. There's nothing misunderstood about goats. They're assholes, and we all know it. And. Here's the gazebo, or not the gazebo, the outhouse thus far. Solitary soldier, how many times are you going to ask that question, huh? <clears throat> you 
You got a thousand bucks in your pocket for a quality 1911? If you do, get one. Or more, 1500 bucks for a good Colt. I had a couple of Power Ordnance P14s back in the day, and I really like them. But, uh, the Pesiba. <laughs> Uh, I really like them. They're rounds limited, but um, still waiting for my bear fact. I promise you it's coming, homie. Shalom. Um, or if you'd like a refund, just email me. Uh, 1911s, they're cool. I like them. They're expensive for a good one. Rounds limited, but handguns, how many, how many rounds do you need, should you need, right? Um, but I like 1911s. I like my Glock 21. Uh, if I'm going to carry a 45, that's what I, that's what I carry. Um, bear facts. Let's have a, let's level bear nation. We are busting our ass to continue to run our small business during COVID. I'm right now waiting on 600 compressed gauzes from North American Rescue. It's not just getting the pouches, which are handmade, made in America, guaranteed forever, that are currently now being produced by two subcontractors, soon to be a third. Um, so it's challenging enough to just to be able to get this part, okay, which is made, my bear fact shipped yesterday, we'll arrive Friday, at which point it'll be mollied to my face. James Cannon, bless you, thank you. Be patient, y'all, worth the wait copy so it's not just getting this part which again is these things are badass right yes we have a company in connecticut we have a company in arkansas and we are soon to have another company in arkansas under contract for a total of three subcontractors producing these and so it's not just getting the pouch Companies like North American Rescue, which is where we get our components from, are having the same supply chain issues as everybody else. So for them to get their subcomponents to create the components that we use in our kits, they're running into COVID things. I used to be able to order Quick Clot three times per week from the manufacturer. Three times per week. Hey, we need more Quick Clot, get some more Quick Clot. Now it's every four to six weeks I can order Quick Clot, which means that we are being forced to carry a massive amount of inventory. And that sucks for us because it slays profitability. I've got a bunch of money sitting in inventory that I'd rather not have there. And um, because I have to have enough inventory to cover my orders, which then means forecasting orders. It's businessy. It gets really businessy at that point. Um, but my point here is that I'm waiting on 600 compressed gauze, just compressed gauze, which is next to the Mylar blanket. If you do the cost analysis on it in the bear fact is the cheapest thing in the bear fact. But if I don't have them, I can't ship the freaking bear facts out. So it's not just about us getting stuff from getting the pouches from our suppliers. It's also about getting the shears, the quick clot, the compressed gauze, the freaking mylar bandages, <laughs> or mylar blankets, rather. <laughs> Rolled gauze, all that stuff. Um, getting them in so that we can ship the product out. Like, we have crash kits right now that need to go out. We have been waiting for North American Rescue to get their mother-freaking burn dressings in stock so that we can get those uh, kits out. Be I'm not going to send them without burn dressings because they need burn dressings. Um, so it's it's a challenge. Believe me, it's a challenge. And I understand that people order a product, they'd like to receive it. I get it. I just received my baseball glove two weeks ago that I ordered in March. 
and it's a baseball glove that comes off of a factory floor, unlike the bare fact, which does not. So patience is a virtue. I understand if you're unhappy with your service, please let us know. I will give you a full refund. Um, but we are doing everything that we can. I mean, we are constantly up the ass of our suppliers to be able to get the product that we need. But I mean, it's, there's a lot that goes into this, believe it or not. There's a lot that goes into this. So, <clears throat> that being said, it's the best freaking blowout kit on the planet, bar none. There is not a better IFAC. If you need an individual first aid kit, there is not a better one than the bear fact. Uh, thank you, Tails. Uh, and I'm not, that's not me saying that. That's Army Special Forces saying that. Marine Raiders saying that. Air Force Pararescuemen saying that. SWAT medics saying that. Lifelong EMTs and paramedics saying that. Law enforcement officers everywhere saying that. Um, one of the most heartbreaking bits of feedback we ever got was on our stomp bag, which is a hospital on your back. And the gentleman who bought it said, hey, I was on a LARP team in Vietnam, long range reconnaissance patrol, and I was the medic. And if I had had this bag when I was in Vietnam, I know for a fact that there would still be men alive today. Thank you for making this product because we need this. And I'm like, damn damn right and so we don't make chinesium junk like everybody else does in fact our ifac the bear fact exceeds united states military specification for individual first aid kits our stomp bag seal team operational medical pack exceeds naval special warfare seal team standards for what should be in a stomp bag ours is better than what the navy seals have all the stuff that we make, our combat lifesaver kit, has more in it than what is issued to Marine Corps combat lifesavers. So, like, we just are really trying to not F around. Logan Matai, spare you on an amazing business. Coming from a family business, sometimes you're at the mercy of suppliers. Keep doing good work. Thank you, Logan. And so, anyway... I'll hop off of that subject. My point here is, um, yeah, it might take a little while to get our products because the whole world is experiencing supply chain logistics and half the country's on fire and there's literally a an insurrection being led against a sitting president right now. But we're doing our best. <laughs> Riots affect shipping times, a.k.a. Bama Buckeye. We're doing our best. And if our best isn't good enough, I understand. In which case, get with me and I'll give you a full refund and an apology. So. Just became an affiliate with Hero Soap. Good job, Hillbilly Homesteader. What's your promo code, Hillbilly Homesteader? Prepped Patriot, bless you. Yeah, I mean, everything. Ammo components, right? <laughs> Joe Hire, bless you. Cry gear is good, uh, It's but it, boy, is it pricey. <clears throat> it's well made, though. And I think if you have the money, uh, get it. I got my ZZ in three days. Bear shipping is on point. Bless you, Lee. Well, that's because we have a sweatshop full of Hebrew children that make the Zitziot. So that's different than the bear facts. So. Yeah, it is beautiful. The Cry JPC is absolutely beautiful. Um, promo code will be Hillbilly. Lucas spoke very highly of you. Well, that's because Lucas is brain damaged. I'm just kidding. Hillbilly, are you good to go right now with that code? Hillbilly Homesteader? Just give me a yes or a no.
Sojourn does build plate carriers one at a time, Black Sheep. No. All right, Hillbilly, you let me know when you are, and then the Bear Nation for one day is going to wash their dirty butts with the promo code Hillbilly at Hero Soap just to get you spun up, brother, by the end of the week. You let me know when you are, okay? Good morning, Crazy Canuck. So part of the challenge with Bear Facts is that Sojourn Gear was the... Um, was the uh, originator and primary supplier of these pouches. Bless you, Hillbilly. And we have grown so fast. Um, hey, Chinook Medical, their $186 combat lifesaver pouch, I can get off of Alibaba for $5.86. Nope, I lied, $12.34. So have I tried them? Yup. And I'm telling you, that exact pouch off of Alibaba uh, for $12.34. So they source it overseas for $12.34 and turn around and sell it for $186 on their website. Yay, capitalism. And people are beating their doors down. So Sojourn Gear was the primary manufacturer of the pouches uh, for the bare fact and the bare minimum and does a phenomenal job. Um... The problem was that his ability to produce facts could not keep up with our demand. And so we onboarded a second uh, and are onboarding a third supplier. And Sojourn Gear, what he really wants to get back to doing is making custom tactical gear, which he's phenomenal at. And so he does make plate carriers and he makes uh, one of the earliest Patreon giveaways that we did. <clears throat> was a custom Sojourn war belt that I was um, coveting. It was awesome. It was significantly better than my own war belt. And so, uh, you know, he makes awesome stuff. Absolutely awesome stuff. And so he's working on getting back to the uh, having the ability to produce that handmade awesome stuff that's not just a bare fact, but it's whatever you need, whatever you want. So... Yeah, yeah, he's SojournGear.com, S-E-W-J-O-U-R-N, Gear.com. He's awesome. Hard City Raindrops, bless you. I have a lot of med kits. I show them all the time. The options in yours blows everyone out. I have bought one yet or seen the bag, but I will. Bear, what are you going to do if you get a DOD contract for the med kits? Ah, ha, 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 ha. I already got that figured out. Um, let's just say Patriot Plumber. Good morning, brother. The, um, the new subcontractors we're onboarding have the ability to produce a significant amount of kits yet they also have low minimums, which means that I, as a small business, can stay in business. Um, so, we're not there yet. Because, did I mention, I'm literally waiting on 600 pieces of compressed gauze, and that's the hang-up right now. Compressed gauze. So, Owen, I have no idea how much his plate carriers run. That's a question for him. So... Is there quality on point with Sojourn? Of course it is. In fact, one of the things that's absolutely awesome about Brother Cody at Sojourn Gear is that he made all of the patterns and all of the samples for our other subcontractors, and he worked with them to source the exact same materials from the exact same suppliers that he uses, so it's the exact same quality material, and he has in inspected the, um, the final product that um, that these other manufacturers are producing. And so it has to get the Brother Cody stamp of approval before it's onboarded at Bear Independent, which is super cool. And, um, and he climbs trees like a boss. He doesn't so much climb them as just stand on the ground and reach up and pull himself up them. It's because, you know, I'm just messing. Hey, Joe. Hey, Bear. Huge fan here, brother. I love what you're doing for charity. Bless, bless you, Prepper Nation. So. Um, 
So that being said, yeah, they 100% have to pass this, the Cody sniff test in order to become a subcontractor. Have you seen Bigfoot in your area? Ooh, that's an interesting one. Not so much seen as much as heard and felt. Lester Dillon, understood. Jamie Haas. I'm not chilly. I feel good, man. I feel good. Brian, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Yeah, I don't want to overextend myself. Look, his beard hair just fell out. Look, it's just coming out all over the place. Uh, all American wife, email us at admin at Baron Dependent. Admin at Baron Dependent. <clears throat> Bless you, smells bud K. Cody is a boss. JK Iron Man, good morning, brother. <laughs> Speaking of sniffling, uh, actually, we that's how we begun our discussion here on the porch this morning. I, I will be. We've had um, we've had some discussion about maybe we should be live streaming while the debate is on doing live commentary. Um, I don't know yet. We'll see. <clears throat> but um, my opinion is that Sleepy Joe is going to get pummeled by Donald J. Trump. And or we are going to witness the best body double and or deep fake that the uh, Democrats have ever pulled off. Because there's no way that that malfunctioned, inept old man, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., is going to be able to stand up on stage for any amount of time against the withering verbal blows of Donald J. Trump. There's no way. If this was an MMA fight, I'd call it in the first round with a total knockout for, uh, for Trump in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Knocked out cold. So, Glock 316, good morning. So. I would love to see... Um, I would love to see Trump, Biden, and Rogan in a room. So, you think they'll try to JFK Trump if he wins? That's a really interesting point. Um, big picture strategic stuff. I think the Democrats are hoping to not win the election. I think they're throwing this election. Look at their nomination, Biden and Harris. I think they're throwing this election so that they can use the fact that they lost, coupled with the fact that they're already undermining the validity of the election results that haven't even occurred yet, so that they can create the problem that they are the solution for Hegelian dialectic to rile up their base and their militant wings, Antifa, BLM, so forth and so on, to set more shit on fire so that more people say, we need more control. And then the Democrats go, we're good at control. Watch this. And I think that there's a, probably a coin toss right now, a legitimate uh, civil war in the United States by inauguration day. And... I think we're probably a coin toss that Trump legitimately labels Antifa as an insurrection. Already lobbying to have them labeled as a, as a terrorist organization, which they are, because terror, terrorism, is using violence for political motivations, to further political motivations. And that's exactly what they're doing. So, <clears throat> I think the Dems have overplayed their hand. And they're committed now, and so they're just going big. They're going big. I think this whole Agenda 2030, 
uh, event 201 one world order bull crap is what they're going for now that's that's the direction they're headed and i think that they already understand that we're in a declining empire and so there's going to be a revolution anyway and if they can foment that revolution and control it they can come out on top if you look at like the russian revolution what did lenin promise to the serfs in russia and remember this <clears throat> remember this because you're going to see it coming peace land and bread okay peace land and bread well they're working on the peace right now you have to have chaos in order to make peace likely everybody's in the cities the cities are going to run out of resources we've already talked about that which means they need what land where out here in the country well, how are they going to get that that's long-term strategery and bread food scarcity people food scarcity i'm me and i feel like we don't have enough food and i'm me so yeah peace land and bread remember that because i think we're going to see something like that coming fermented by the democrats here because it's the same old playbook i mean it's it's marxism now lenin and marx were not the same people karl marx basic theology was I hate everybody who's not me. Um, <laughs> and Lenin was just a crazy, um, he was just a crazy, what do you call that? Not excommunicated, banished. He was thrown out of Russia several times. What, into Germany and then into Sweden? Question mark. Anyway, my point here is exiled. Thank you, Cody Willis. I knew there was an X in there. Um, my point here is that fermenting revolution is not that hard and people are very predictable. So I think this whole sleepy Joe thing, they've got two ways they can go with this. Either they win and do what they want to do, or they lose and they do what they want to do. They've got a plan for either. So. <coughs> Food, ammo, and fellowship with brothers. And the Father will get bare nation through anything. Amen. I'm home alone. Do the debate live stream, please. Copy. Yeah, interesting turn of events with the 9-11 out or 9-1-1 outages last night. That was a Microsoft glitch as I understand it. Don't tread on Bear Nation shirts. That's cool. That's a good idea. I'll tell you what, myself and some of the Bear Camp brethren the other day went out to our range and were practicing some drills. And I was very pleased, very pleased. Um, very pleased. In fact, one brother made the comment, he goes, man, this is the wrong camp to come rob. I was like, yep, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> agreed. Um, Bear, how do you feel about investing in crypto? I, I don't. Uh, I had some money in crypto and I pulled it all out and turned it into food. A while ago, half a year ago or more, um, I don't have a warm, fuzzy feeling about crypto. I believe that it started altruistically with the best of intentions and like all things, it's been co-opted and 
the they, the cabal, the reptilian overlords, um, are not going to allow anything to undermine their authority for very long. And so this is a concept that most people miss. The vast majority of people miss is the concept of co-opting. You create something that's a legitimate opposition to me and it threatens me. Well, I let you grow in power and grow in authority and grow in stature and start getting people to flock to your position to support you. I may even help people flock to your position to support you. And then I'm going to slowly trickle my people, my tentacles into you and corrupt you and then co-opt you. And I'm going to take you over, not on the surface so that it's noticeable to everybody else, but on the back end, you belong to me now. You're no longer a threat to me. And so you continue operating as if you were the counterpoint to me. However, you're not because I own you. I run you. I uh, spoon feed you information, give you direction. And now everybody that's following you, can we say 17th letter of the alphabet? Everybody that's following you feels as if they're receiving good information. But you've been co-opted. So. I think crypto has been co-opted. Bear, thoughts on supposed wormwood showing behind near the sun recently? I don't know, man. Um... I've been saying over and over again, if this is end times, we'll know it when the two witnesses start preaching uninterrupted from the Temple Mount. If this is not end times, you should still be prepping anyway. What's your opinion on Libertarian candidate Dr. Joe Jorgensen? Uh, I know very little about Dr. Joe. Um, frankly, while I am a Libertarian in my mindset and the way I live my life, um, that friggin' pothead they ran last time pissed me off, and I've paid zero attention to their candidates since then. Um, I'm a libertarian in the way that I live my life, but I'm telling you, the, the time for strong people is now. I'm not blaming the herb, but I'll tell you this, man. If you use the herb or anything else as an excuse in your life, you're missing the entire point. I get it. It's medicine. It can be used to save people. It has legitimately helped many people with many things for sure. But the moment it becomes a crutch and you're using, using it as an excuse to spend your life on your couch playing Call of Duty or whatever your particular form of escapism is, you've lost the battle. And now you're just deluding yourself. Nope. Not into that at all. And I'm not going to pretend that that doesn't happen because it does. And it happens often. Probably just as often as people legitimately finding healing through the herb what I'm saying about that friggin candidate that the libertarians ran was he sucked and I didn't like him at all <clears throat> now I'm on record here at this channel that if you smoke weed marijuana whatever you call it and you're a functional human being and you're hitting all your marks and you're actually doing life successfully cool but if you're sitting around doing nothing with your life, telling me about how it's medicine, uncool. Because I've, I literally can see 23 bottles of whiskey from where I'm sitting. 23. Do I sit around drinking whiskey all day because 100 years ago it was medicine? Nope. But I sure do in the evenings like to sit on my porch and have a couple, three whiskeys. 100%. But it is not my life. It does not consume me. And the moment it starts to, 
I take a Nazarite vow and I step away from it for a month just to show myself that I can. I don't see a lot of people who smoke weed stepping away from it for a month at a time just to show themselves that they can. Right? So, and if your entire platform is being built around, hey, we should legalize weed, I'm like, no, man. There's much more that can be done, should be done than that. <clears throat> um, so, again, to reiterate, I don't know anything about Dr. Joe. I haven't paid attention to the Libertarians since old Gary. Um, I'm not really a fan of politics. I've, I have a video here called Why I Hate Politics. So... I don't know. I think it's about being as strong as you can where you are out, where you are at, and then using that strength to perpetuate outward rather than trying to find some external strength to perpetuate inward. And I think so many people look to the president to be a strong man and to let his strength perpetuate from the outward in on them and their living situation rather than they themselves being strong men letting their strength perpetuate outward into the world from them. So. <laughs> M4 woman, who are you talking to? Bet you think you got it all figured out. You might want to find another channel to hang out at. Tactical Homesteader 2019. Shaloha. Bear, what is the best body armor? Uh, who makes the best beer? Who makes the best chainsaw? Who makes the best truck? Blondes, brunettes, redheads, or black-haired women? AR-500 armor is all the same. In that, AR-500 steel is a type of steel. Like, OS-8 steel uh, is OS-8 steel, right? 7075 aluminum is 7075 aluminum. So AR-500 steel is AR-500 steel. It comes from the foundry as AR-500 steel. Then the armor companies take CNC machines and water jets and whatever and cut it and press it and shape it and then apply their coatings, anti-spall coatings, so forth and so on. So the hit rating of the armor is the same because of the conformity of the steel to the specifications set forth by the industry. So you really get down to anti-spall coatings uh, from there. I like Spartan armor. This is Spartan Armor right here. This we're giving away to the Patreon, Patreon Patrons Thursday. Can I have one of each woman, please? <laughs> Good luck with that, bro. See, here's what's going to happen if you get one of each of those women. The black-haired woman and the red-haired woman are going to kill each other while the blonde sits there wondering what's happening and the brunette is organizing all of this and, and administrating and orchestrating it. Red dog, bless you. I'm just kidding, ladies. Everybody simmer down. Uh, so this is Spartan Armor right here. Spartan Armor plates from AdventureFrontier.com. Take care of my plate carrier, brother.
Oh, I have been. Do you know how many times this thing's been rained on since it's been here? A lot. <laughs> but we're giving this away in a couple of days on Patreon. Um, but this has level 3 plus Spartan armor plates in it with the anti-spall coating and with the trauma pads. The real question is, do you want level 4 multi-hit ceramics or do you want level 3 plus steel plates? And the ceramics... <laughs> Um, cost more and weigh less and the steel weighs more and costs less I can't hang on to one def don't want four amen right <coughs> shut up rooster I like AR 9000 yes trauma pads for sure Trauma pads for sure. Um, here's why. It's one more little layer in between you and the plate. More so for um, comfortability than anything else, right? It, they just ride better and feel better when you wear them things all day than uh, when you don't have the trauma pads in them. Now, carriers are getting better and better with having more internal padding on the inside of the carrier um, versus uh, a lot of the older carriers didn't have much at all, and so <clears throat> it wasn't very comfortable. It's still not very comfortable to wear those things around all the time, um, which is one of the things that people miss, man. How many freaking people own a plate carrier and spend zero time in it. Or if they do, they put it on, stand in front of the mirror for a little bit and then take it off again. Go ruck in your plate carrier. Wear it around all day. Pick a day. Sunday, I'm going to wear my plate carrier all day. Cool. Throw it on. And wear it. Go do the things, y'all. Go do the things. Go do the pew-pew in it for sure. Um, it is heavy, though. And here's the other thing. Not just the carrier, but the carrier with your IFAC on it and the six rifle mags you're going to run and the three pistol mags and your knife and your radio and your hydration bladder, your camelback, your whatever other nonsense you're going to have on there. Put all of that on. Wear all of that. And then um, run it from there and find all the interferences. Oh, I love my pistol. Here, wait a minute. I can't get my pistol out to... Right? Ink and iron. Shaloha. So, because it's not just the weight of it. It's not just the comfortability of it, which is usually high weight, low comfort. And um, it's also the interferences that are created when you wear that because your super ultra high speed tactical war belt is awesome. So you throw your carrier on and you can't get anything off of your belt because it, all it does is bump into your carrier. So my plate carrier weighs 36 pounds. So plate carrier and the chaps for sure. So I'm going to let you guys look at the outhouse while I go pee off my porch. Here, and you can look at the baby Traco and the skid steer too. And my IBC totes that I got to plumb in later this week. Oof, duh. So, I've got to do a uh, sheep murder. Uh, 
later today. Well, in 34 minutes. Um, so we're taking out a uh, young male and we'll be grinding him for sausage. And um, that's going to be a good time. And then we've got to finish working on the outhouse today. Um, somebody asked, it's, when I say it's an outhouse, we'll be using composting toilets. Um, and uh, you know what shit actually stands for, as I understand it, is stack high in transit. Because back in the day, these uh, ships, you know, big ships, sailing ships, good morning, holy, 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 bless you. Um, these uh, sailing ships would be filled with manure and they'd put the manure below decks and they would leave a gap um, defensive retention I'll get that in one moment they'd um, would leave a gap in between the top of the manure and the bottom of the deck boards and then um the off-gassing of the manure, that gas, methane, would collect in that space in between the manure and the deck boards, and somebody would go below decks with a lantern, boom, open flame, and the freaking ship would blow up. So, they started stacking it high in transit, Shalom NWA Prepper, so that the ship wouldn't explode. And so, these crates full of manure because they started creating it, would have stenciled on the side of them, S-H-I-T, stack high in transit. And that's how the phrase, that's where the word shit came from. Uh, it's your manure. So, there you go. But those will be composting toilets. Now, IBC totes are 55-gallon drums, new versus used. I like new drums and used IBC totes. Uh, because new drums aren't that expensive and used IBC totes aren't that expensive. It all depends on the type of system that you're using. In residential areas, I have used uh, the blue drums, 55-gallon drums, to great avail. Out here, obviously, we're using totes. Um, the problem with totes for most of us is that they're difficult to hide. Is that an IBC toad or are you just happy to see me? Uh, I'm just happy to see you and I have 330 gallons of rainwater. So, um, for residential applications where you have an HOA or a POA, um, IBC totes are much more difficult to get away with than blue barrels with a tarp over them hidden against the side of the house. Um, can you have a well? Yes, I have three. <clears throat> so, I like the IBC totes. We have one brother who's getting his IBC totes from Little Debbie. And the ones that he's getting had organic honey in them. And he's paying $60 for the tote and getting anywhere between 5 and 20 gallons of honey out of them. In addition to the tote. Per tote. That's a hell of a deal. So... Yeah, I like the IBC totes. Uh, these were used once, and they held red wine. So, <clears throat> I'd be making mead. Amen. What type of protective gear do you recommend for kids? I re recommend putting your kids in an, in an environment where they don't need protective gear. Um... The other thing I recommend is, um, Bear, what do you want to learn? Being asked the same question is obviously getting old. Um, what do I want to learn? I want to learn more Hebrew. Um, I want to relearn the fine art of shooting at long ranges. I want to butcher that chicken. Um, what do I want to learn? I don't know. I'm not really in a learning phase right now. I'm in a doing phase. I'm 
I'm in a doing phase. Got some really big things to announce within the next 90 days. Um, but we're not there yet. I'll leave it at that. Let's pray. How's the PJ project going? Phenomenal. Our brothers are badass. And Yah is badass. And Grindstone is badass. And y'all are badass. Everybody's badass. So. We'll be using pumps for those totes as well. I guess I'll finish with that first. Those totes will collect rainwater, which will then pressurize, uh, be pressurized via a pump back into the existing plumbing system for the house. And the house feeds the outhouse. And the outhouse feeds the gazebo and feeds a uh, frost-free spigot and feeds the cabin that's going in the cove which means one water system will feed the house, the outhouse, the gazebo, the outdoor spigot, and the cabin in the cove, which means I now have a distributed water system using pressure tanks and a pressure pump from rainwater collection that can run on 12 volt and 20, uh, 12 volt and 120 volt. Um, so that I have centralized water collection that is then distributed so that I have well water, rural water, and rainwater collection all running through the same pipes, which depending on which valves I open and close, is then distributed through that pressurized system. That's what we're doing. So, and I'll be doing the same thing with our solar uh, because distributed uh, renewable energy is kind of my secret superpower. That's kind of how I got pseudo famous in the wind power industry because everybody kept saying you can't do that and I was like watch this so I'll be going through that in detail on Patreon probably um, and I may do some on YouTube as well it's YouTube's a battle man videos on YouTube are hard live streams on YouTube are easy which is you may have noticed why we've transitioned a bit as to how we do things on YouTube so let's talk to the father I don't want your head to hurt Oof, Good morning, Father Yah. Father, thank you for a beautiful morning. Thank you for the opportunity to sit here and drink coffee and BS in a safe state, in a relatively safe country filled with relatively good people. Father, I pray that you would continue to teach us how to be good people to the best of our ability. And Father, I pray for all those people out there right now that aren't good people, that maybe all they need is just a bit of intervention in their lives to come to know you or know you better or see the error of their ways. And Father, be it your will, I pray that you would do that. And be it your will, if you would use us to do that, then let it be so. Father, it's not easy to pray for your enemies. And I'm not really sure who our enemies are or if we even have them. So, Father, I pray for clarity on that. I also firmly understand that we are to call no man master but our Father in heaven. And that we put our hope not in men but in you. So I thank you for being awesome and badass and totally powerful and authoritative. And for being the author of all things, including everything that we know is good. And I thank you for your provision and blessing, for your protection, and for your power and your authority, Father. If there's anything within the sound of my voice that's not of you, I rebuke it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, and I command it to flee. Mike, I felt that. And Father, I pray that you'd fill us up with 
with your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, that you be indwelt in us for wisdom, for power and authority, for strength, for discernment, for love and compassion, Father, for healing, for comfort and for peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray that your spirit would move during these fall feasts, that we would come to know you better, that we would experience the abundance of your provision and blessing, that we would know you better personally. Father, thank you for redemption and restoration through Yeshua Messiah. Thank you for making a way for broken people to come home again. If you need to come home, just say this. Father Yah, I have sinned and I confess I need a Messiah and I confess that Yeshua, that Jesus is that Messiah. Father, I lay myself at your feet and ask you to please make me whole again. commit myself into your hand to do your will and walk as you would call me to walk to the best of my ability. Yeshua, thank you for your atoning sacrifice. And thank you for making a way for me to come back into the presence of the Most High. Father, use me for your will. Thank you for giving me a life and showing me how to live it. And I will do my best to walk in such a way as to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant at the end of an age. Father, thank you for everybody within the sound of my voice. Thank you for the bare nation. Thank you for my wife and my children and my friends, and my neighbors and my team, my camp, my mag and my tribe, just the myriad blessings that you bestow on me daily. Father, thank you for Yeshua. It's in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach that I ask all these things. Amen. Love y'all back. I don't know if you saw that, but somebody ran up here on his porch and shoved an onion in my eyeball. Bastard. Bless you, Logan. Bless you, Bear Nation. Juan Solo Dudley. I mean, Diana, I know. Damn onion ninjas. <laughs> Carry in, man. Bear Nation. Y'all are the best. Hey, go do the things. Go put a smile on the Father's face. Talk to him today. If you haven't talked to him in a while, just talk to him. Hey, God, I'm here. What's up? How you been? I really like that tree. You did a good job on that tree. I dig it. Bless y'all. Shalom.